Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, many of you are actually requesting me to make videos on advanced CNN like AlexNet, VGG16, uh, ResNet and many more things uh, that we basically have in advanced transfer learning techniques or deep learning techniques where you can specifically do image classification just by using their weights. So I'm going to start this and the first architecture that I'm actually going to discuss is about AlexNet architecture. Uh, AlexNet architecture is an amazing architecture and because of this architecture led to the invention of where people started thinking about VGG16, VGG19, ResNet50 and many more other architectures. So I'd like to definitely start with this then we'll try to see that what was the problem with respect to this and why did VGG16 come, what problem it solved and like that we'll actually be discussing in the upcoming videos. But in this particular video we'll try to see how what is AlexNet architecture overall and I'll also try to show you the code, how we can actually create AlexNet architecture uh, by using Keras. So first of all, again guys, this video will be more than 20 minutes, I guess, because we'll discuss about the architecture and then we'll also be discussing about the code. Now, uh, continuing with this, uh, let us go to the first slide. So guys, the research paper link is basically given in the source over here. So uh, we'll discuss about the research paper, but first of all, let us just go and see the basic architecture. So this is the whole architecture of uh, AlexNet and I know it does not look that go good because this whole diagram is actually taken from the research paper. So we actually have an image and then we basically pass it through a convolution layer, then a max pooling layer. You can see max pooling layer is here, max pooling layer, layer is here. This is all our convolution layer. You know, then these are basically flattened layer and finally we are getting 1000 outputs, okay? Now why we are getting 1000 outputs? Because this architecture was developed based on the ImageNet data set, right? Now ImageNet data set, if you don't know about it guys, you'll be having many number of images, you know, and they are actually 1000 categories, you know, 1000 different categories. So uh, if you are actually planning to implement or use this whole transfer learning technique, you just have to pull down the weights or create the same kind of architecture with the help of Keras uh, and the TensorFlow. You can do that, okay? And I'll show you in this particular example example so uh, probably this diagram does not look that good let's let's go to the next diagram okay now in this particular diagram we'll be discussing about each and everything we'll discuss about how this what is this uh, mathematical calculation that is actually happening everything till the end of this particular layer so let's let's begin okay now first of all uh, to start with uh, this is basically an image okay this is a image now image shape over here is 20, 227 cross 227 cross 3 now this is your height and width. This is basically your RGB channel. So usually in AlexNet architecture, we actually provide 227 cross 227 cross 3. Let me just write it down over here so that it will be easy for you to understand. Okay. So this your image size is 227 cross 227 cross 3. Right. And this 3 is actually your RGB channel. Okay. Now, as we pass this over here, you can see that we are using a convolution layer and the filter size, I'll, uh, I will say it as F, it is nothing but 11 cross 11, right? So this filter which is used is 11 cross 11 and your stride is four, okay? And how many filters we are actually using? We are using 96 filters in the first convolution layer. Now, why this is important? Because after this image is getting passed to the convolution layer, some mathematical operation will happen, right? And why, how this image is getting created? And this image, you can see the size is nothing but 55 cross 55 cross 96, right? So this is what we are getting as an output, 55 cross 55 cross 96. But how did we get it as 55 cross 55? I'm passing 227 cross 227. Right. And with respect to that, if you if you know, in my, I hope if you have seen my complete deep learning playlist, there is one kind of uh, formula that gets applied. Now here, this 227 cross 227, let me consider that this, this is my n value. Okay. So this is basically my height and width, right? Pixels are 227 comma 227. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to consider my n value as 227. I have my filter size that is 11 cross 11 and my stride is equal to 4. Now, this operation that led to this 55 cross 55, that operation formula is something like this. So this we can write it as n minus f, right? Or uh, let me just change this formula a little bit. There is also a concept which is called as padding, okay? So I'm going to write n plus 2p minus f divided by stride, right? 
plus one. So this is the overall formula that gets applied after every convolution operation. In this particular case, you don't see any padding. Padding basically means, suppose if I want to get the same size of this particular image, like 227 into 227 in my next layer also, what we do is that we can do some kind of padding on top of it. Okay, if you have not seen the padding video, just go and check in my complete deep learning playlist. Now see this, over here I have 227, right? So this N will now get replaced by 227, 227 plus 2 into P. P is nothing but padding. In this particular case, my P is 0 because I did not do any padding, right? If I had put some kind of padding, you know, this pixels uh, would have been more when compared to 255, uh, right? So here P is 0. So 2 into 0 is nothing but 0, right? So I'm going to do minus. What is F? 11 cross 11, right? My filter size is 11. So I'm just going to use this 11, okay? Divided by 4, right? Plus 1. Now, if I do this particular operation, guys, probably I think I will be getting like 227. Um, it is nothing but 238. 238 divided by 4, right? How much it is? So, for FISA, uh, and probably it will be somewhere around for FISA 20, uh, 20. And if I, if I put 3, I think 227 plus 11 is uh, 238, right? So, it will be somewhere approximately around 55, right? So, uh, this will be my... I hope it is 55. Let me see. So let me see the calculation. I'll, I'll actually use a calculator. I don't want to eat so much of my head. So I'm just going to use my mobile calculator so that this session does not get, uh, you know, <laughs> hampered. So 228 divided by 4. Okay. So it is somewhere around. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I got it. So <laughs> the problem was that I was doing. Okay, I'll remove this. I, I made a very, very simple mistake over here. So 227 minus 11, 227 minus, I was adding it. What? Uh, okay. So it is 216 divided by 4. So 4 fives are 20. Okay. And 1, it goes over here. 4 is a 16. Right. I hope now it is correct. 6, uh, two. okay. Now I'm getting 54. Now this 54 will get added with 1. Right. And finally, I'll be getting 55. Okay. So it is very, very much simple, guys. Again, uh, if you really want me to show, you can see I just made a simple mistake. I, I had written 227 plus 11 I was seeing, but it is minus 11. So I got 216 divided by 4, uh, which is equal to 54. And 54 plus 1 is actually equal to 55. So I can see 55 cross 55. Why this 96? Because here I have used how many kernels, how many filters? That is basically 96. So this, uh, this, this whole width is basically 96 uh, based on this 96 kernels. But if I, if I just consider the image and the height, it is basically 55 cross 55. Perfect. Now uh, coming to this, coming to the next step. Now here you, you can see in the next step, you are actually performing max pooling in this architecture. And in max pooling here, you have taken three cross three and your stride is two. Okay. Now see your stride, this S value is two. Okay. So now how my equation will become, let's see whether we'll get 27 cross 27 cross 96 or not. So initially my N value is over here 55. So I'll be using 55 plus two into P, two into P. I don't have any poor, uh, padding over here. So it will be zero minus F. Okay. So this is zero minus F. F over here is nothing but three cross three. So I'm going to use three divided by 2 okay plus 1 so this whole will be in one operation so 55 minus 3 is nothing but 52 okay 52 divided by 2 is nothing but 26 26 plus 1 is nothing but 27 so i've got actually 27 27 and this will actually be 96 because um, over here based on this kernels it will be same right and we are actually trying to use the same number of kernels sorry in max pooling we don't use kernels so the kernels will be almost same okay now coming to the next layer now in the next layer you will be seeing that we have again performed a convolution operation again we'll try to do the same operation so we are doing the same operation over here so here you can see that i have used padding as 2 okay now it will become 27 plus 2 into p right 2 into padding so 2 into 2 is nothing but 4 minus 5 why my filter size is 5 cross 5 right divided by 1 because here my stride is just 1 Remember guys, here my stride is one, okay? And then uh, plus one, which is again nothing but 27. Always remember whenever your stride is one, right? And suppose if you have performed some kind of padding, okay? With uh, with any filter size, the, the, the conversion after this will be almost same. The image and the pixels will be almost same. 
but remember this kernels that is being used is 256 so now this particular width that i see is having 256 okay so just think in this specific way then again you have max pooling layer and your size now becomes 13 cross 13 and 256 because here you are going to use tried is equal to 2 i'll tell you what is the main problem in just understanding just by seeing the architecture you'll be able to understand but you'll just not be able to remember everything because uh, suddenly you have done a convolution operation here you have used 11 cross 11 here you have used uh, max pooling with 3 cross 3 again you have used convolution operation with 5 cross 5 with 256 kernels here you have done max pooling again 3 cross 3 which tried is equal to 2 so it becomes difficult but understand this whole architecture is a kind of experiment you know where they were able to get some very good results okay so here after max pooling again you are doing convolution operation again you can do this all calculation guys okay this calculations are pretty much amazing so uh, finally you'll be able to see like this like this and all again you're doing some convolution operation you're doing convolution so after this you can see that there is one uh, way you can actually remember first you do it a convolution operation then max pooling then convolution then max pooling then convolution then convolution then convolution so three convolutions after that and then you have actually done max pooling okay so after doing max pulling, and remember guys, here you, all the padding was one, right? So because of that, this particular size is almost same, okay? Only the kernels are changing because the kernels are changing over here, okay? So this is the how you have to remember the architecture. Now after max pulling, definitely after max pulling, if your stride is equal to two, this will be divided by two, so it will be six cross six. Again, you can apply this simple formula again. This is the formula. You have to remember this, this formula, will actually help you understand each and everything okay then after this when you get it now what we have got we have got 6 cross 6 multiplied by 256 right so when i multiply this probably i uh, i will be getting a fully connected layer with 4096 right 4096 nodes so this will uh, this this all values just remember we are this all values now we are going to take this and make it in a, in a straight line right so by this we are actually going to get 4096 nodes which is considered this will be my dense nodes okay dense nodes this will be the input after this we will be making this all input go through this dense nodes which is also called as a fully connected layer so remember guys i'm going to write it over here it is nothing but fully connected layer okay now, so this is my fully connected layer one then fully connected layer two of the same size and finally i'm passing to my output my output definitely is nothing but thousand outputs because i have thousand categories of outputs in ImageNet, right in ImageNet, i have that so this thousand will be getting applied along with the soft max function because if you know if there are two binary outputs you usually use sigmoid but if you have many more other, greater than two at that time you basically use soft max so i hope you have understood the architecture guys uh you can actually go through this particular architecture but remember one thing you need not buy hard this just by seeing the architecture you should be able to understand what kind of operations are basically taking whenever i say convolution then you have to remember this formula right n minus 2p plus f divided by strides the uh, plus one right so that formula if you remember you'll be able to understand how this size is basically getting created this is very very important to understand for all of you guys and uh, if you understand this i think it will be very very simple for you to understand all the other architectures because all the other architecture and remember this architecture main thing is that the team right of the research paper who had actually written i'm just going to name him i'm going to show you the research paper uh, after this and over there they had actually tried many many variations right many variations and out of that this started working and this led to the invention of the other transfer learning techniques that we actually have right so this was about uh, lxnet architecture now what i'm going to do is that and uh, i will just show you so i have also started creating for vg16 which will be my next video after this because many people were requesting this yes this is the whole architecture over here guys uh, and you can see that i have also written the code and i'll be, I'll be discussing about these three important points also which is pretty much important for you all and all these things this whole thing will be given in your github okay so this also will try to discuss now what i'm going to do quickly is that uh okay this is the alexnet okay now what i'm going to do quickly is that so what i'm going to do quickly is that i'm going to basically go through this whole uh, the ImageNet classification this is where the research paper was there 
but remember uh, just have a read on to it i'm going to discuss some important points which i've actually captured over here right from this research paper now before that people used to develop cnn models right uh, and uh, before i start you know first of all a very big thanks for alex chris krisvesky uh, from university of toronto jeffrey inton uh, the father of back propagation algorithm like he led the whole ai deep learning things uh, about the back propagation algorithm amazing person in terms of knowledge okay so uh, so yes <laughs> this will be pretty much amazing because i i am a huge fan of jeffrey inton like the kind of work he has actually done you know it is pretty much amazing now uh, coming to this uh, transfer learning technique guys uh, i'll go over here why does alexnet achieve better results now uh, alexnet uh, in the alexnet architecture guys it has been clearly written what all things they have actually done okay so first of all uh, the thing that they have done is that they have applied relu okay relu in uh, in the hidden neurons right relu in the hidden neurons so you can see that relu activation function is used and if you don't know about relu activation function just go and check my deep learning complete deep learning playlist they'll be explaining that how things are actually explained over there right so this is my whole relu activation function the function is that it will be either giving you max of 0 comma x right so this particular bar, if your x output that is your weights multiplied by input plus bias if it is greater than 0 at that time if this function is getting passed through the relu function it will be giving that specific value itself right so uh, you can see over here uh, relu based deep convolution networks are trained several times faster than tanh and sigmoid based networks the following figure shows the number of iteration for a four layer convolution neural network so this is what it is the second thing that they had actually done which made this uh, research paper amazing was something called as standardization okay so uh, standardization is a technique um, if i if i just go back to my diagram right so standardization what does standardization basically mean uh, i'll just give you an example over here so here you can consider this particular example right this whole uh, layer right it is getting passed it is going to standardize this whole parts this whole uh, i can say that this whole channel you know this 13 cross 13 suppose if i am taking this particular pixels if i am considering everything till here it is going to standardize this one okay in this particular it is not going to standardize the whole thing but instead it will take uh, uh, what can i say it, it can take pixels by pixels like this with the whole length and then it will try to standardize it so because of that it also has performed well uh, and here uh, let me discuss one more important point because that word actually led to something amazing things uh, in this so standardize how oh, it is called as local response normalization taking that particular stride that uh, that whole pixels till the depth till the whole kernel size and basically standardizing or normalizing it okay and that particular thing is given by this particular formula and definitely you don't not uh, by heart it just understand what are the things the next and the very important thing is basically about dropout dropout is a concept if you don't know about dropout i had again uploaded a video in my deep learning clip playlist uh, which can effectively prevent overfitting of neural networks so here you can see that some of the nodes will be disabled if they are not performing well okay and we we can easily uh, implement dropout by uh, by keras where we can give a dropout uh, functionality uh, like we can say that from that particular hidden layer you can drop out 20% of the hidden nodes and all okay uh, apart from this three properties they had also implemented enhanced data that that basically means they have performed data augmentation right now i know if you know some of the advanced uh, convolution neural networks like vg16 and all we usually do data augmentation but uh, understand they had uh, actually done and this is i'm talking about uh, probably the year was somewhere around uh, 2013 or 14 let's see what was the year at that time which this started you know i think it was in 2013 or 14 uh, is the year given over here no i don't let's see but you can google it uh, but it is somewhere around 2013 and 14 okay so this particular whole article was actually given uh, and apart from that uh, if i go over here back so this was uh, data augmentation if you don't know about data augmentation guys uh, uh, it is basically creating more images by applying some zooming options uh, or uh, you can say that rotating options horizontal rotating vertical rotating all the different kind of functionalities which i have already taken in my practical videos right now considering this whole architecture guys now this architecture by seeing this particular architecture i think you if you if you know keras or 
PyTorch, if you know TensorFlow, you can definitely create this easily. And this particular code, I'm actually trying to show it to you over here. Uh, I before going ahead, guess uh, I also this whole code is basically written. Uh, if I take uh, as this as an example, right? So if I import this, and if I, I I just want to show you that what version it is actually present, right? So I'm just going to write tf dot version underscore underscore, right? So if I if I go and see the version, it is nothing but 2.2.0 so any any libraries that you have to import you have to start with import tensorflow.keras this model sequential dense activation dropout flatten convolution 2d max pooling 2d and batch normalization so here i have just manually created everything what you can do is that just replace this input shape with 227 comma 227 then i think it will work absolutely fine and you can see that 96 filters are here whether i'm using 96 filters or not so here you you can see that it is having 96 uh, filters 227 caught 227 kernel size is 11 cross 11 so i have 11 cross 11 and then 96 kernels then the padding is valid uh, activation function i told you that we are going to apply it as relu then we have max pooling layer in the max pooling layer okay it should be 3 cross 3 adder can 2 cross 2 so it just follow this whole structure and based on that you can actually mention what should be the max pooling so i just follow this architecture i think uh, this problem statement was completely different okay again we had used convolution layer with 256 kernels so here you can see that uh, again kernel size here you have to make 5 cross 5 okay so just I've, I've given you a sample of code okay just try to change by seeing that that will be a homework for you all uh, which will be pretty much important again the whole code link will be given in the description the reason i have given this uh, i think i had applied it for 224 comma 224 but i think this was a different use case uh, altogether but you can definitely use this but make sure that whether you should use padding as valid or same where you should use same remember suppose here 27 cross 27 is there and i am getting an output as 27 comma 27 you have to use padding uh, you have to provide some kind of padding over here okay so you can say padding is equal to same so you'll be getting the same output okay so i think uh, this will be more than sufficient for you to understand okay so this was altogether some amazing thing that we have learned about alexnet but remember because of this particular functionalities uh, it was able to classify very nicely with respect to image data set again hats off to all the researchers and uh, who are able to provide this research paper so that we can learn and i hope you like this particular video in the next video we'll be discussing about vgg16 um, and uh, i'll also show you by solving a problem and in vgg16 also we can write this kind of code okay why can we can write this kind of code but i would like to suggest you to use this you know the transfer learning techniques using keras applications that i'll try to show you in my next video so yes this was all about this particular video i hope you like it please do subscribe to the channel if you are not already subscribed i'll see you on the next video have a great day thank you one and all bye bye